Hi there, MTG Ontario and ManDeprive.com. This is yet another M11 draft, uh, right after my last one and the one by Jay Jang. Uh, I was kind of in a good mood recently, um, ever since I uh, uh, got my GPT win on uh, the weekend. So uh, I got my three buys for Toronto. So I felt like, you know, I want to play some more standard, or sorry, some more uh, limited. So I'm going to go ahead and do another draft video for everyone to see here, and I'm just going to spread the. Uh, love of video watching around. Um, this quite a pack. Uh, we got two really, like, two first pick white cards and two first pick black cards. Angelic Arbiter is really, really good. Um, I would say it's quite definitely a bomb. Like, Doomblade's a very solid card. Blinding Mage is also very solid. And Corrupt is probably, like, the fourth pick card in this pack. I think it's between, like, one of the two removal spells in either color or the Angelic Arbiter. I <coughs> I mean, I don't like the fact that I'm passing Blinding Mage when I'm taking Angelic Arbiter, but, and there's a bunch of other white cards in this pack, um, and passing Doomblade with Corrupt in the pack is also not so good, but yeah, I think the next pick's gonna be Doomblade, so I'll, I'm fine with taking Angelic Arbiter here. Um, well, this kind of makes me happy, I mean, regardless of what pick we took last, like, or what card we took last pick, we could have had, like, pretty decent cards in this pack, like, if we took a black card, we could take a Liliana Spectre here and be happy with that. But I'm, I'm perfectly happy taking this pacifism in our white. Um, another option here is sleep. And uh, like I said, like the specter again. I don't like white-black all that much because it doesn't have very good mana. You can also take ember hauler for white-red, but I don't like that color combination either. I usually try to stay away from enemy colors. The only enemy colors I really like are black-green and uh, green-blue. Um, green-blue usually because you can splash other colors. Um, blue white's also very good, but I don't see a reason for us to go off color right now when there's a perfectly good pick in our color. So I'm gonna take the pacifism. <coughs> okay, um, now we're still faced with more decisions here. We got <coughs> we got a uh, Cloud Crusader in our color, Azur Drake and Jason Genuity and Augury Owl in blue. It looks blues looks like blue's quite open. But considering we passed a Blinding Mage pack one, I think that it's safer to just cut the white signal right now. I don't mind not going blue if we ship all these blue cards and possibly see what signal we get in pack two. Like, we, can, we don't have to commit to a second color yet. So, the other, another card to note here is Acidic Slime, which is third pick here. Um, I know a lot of people don't really like green, and myself included. Um, like, I don't mind being green, but I try to tend to stay out of it if I can. Same thing with red. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take the Cloud Crusader here. I like staying white. Um, well, Stormfront Pegasus solidifies our plan. Uh, another card worth noting here is Rise from the Grave. Otherwise, everything else is sort of mediocre. Like, if we went black, it looked like black is um, slowly drying up. I'm not sure how big of a signal Rise from the Grave is at fourth pick. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy that we went white instead of uh, black. So. Um, now we don't have too much to go on. We got Siege Mastodon uh, in our colors. We got uh, a fifth pick Garrick's Companion. Um, considering we saw a Sidic Slime come, like green might be a little bit open. Uh, there's also Diminish in this pack, which I'm not a huge fan of. Otherwise, like the pack is pretty dry. I'm fine with taking Garrick's Companion, even if we might not be in green. Like this is a card that I'm like I'd like to go green for. Because, like Andrew Tingeki uh, said before, Garrick's Companion in White Green, especially, is very strong when you have access to Giant Crows and Mighty Leaps and things like that. Because this guy is just so strong. If you just if they if they think that they can trade with bears and you just you know smash them with any kind of trick in your colors. <coughs> oh, there you go. See, another Garrick's Companion and a Plummet. Uh, Leyline of Anticipation is not very exciting. I don't think I've ever seen anyone play that. I mean, it's a colored. Uh, Vidalcan Shackles with a slight upside. Sorry, uh, Vidalcan Orie with a slight upside. And Vidalcan Orie really never saw play in Limited either. I don't see why... I've, I've been on the like the other end of this card. I think LSV has too, watching one of his, uh, rep one of his uh, draft videos. And I don't think I've ever seen anyone win with this card. I mean, it can be really good, but like those wins are far and few between. So I'm going to take the Garrus Companion and be happy with my green. Um, really there's nothing in this pack for us. Prize Unicorn is fine. Hornet Sting is okay, but like Hornet Stings will come. And Prize Unicorn is can be like a you know, a crappy sort of overrun card that might blow you like you might get blown out if they have a removal of sorts. Uh or any kind of trick. 
<coughs> but, I mean, there's not much else for us here, so, I mean, Elixir of Immortality is okay, but, yeah, I'd rather just take a non-color card. Uh, let's see, there's a Hornet Sting. Uh, Excommunicate is actually a pretty decent card for us at this point. Like, I'm surprised it came around this late. I'm happy with, like, people sending us white cards. If I lack to, like, man, I lost this in, like, um, a sealed deck two weeks ago. And it was pretty gross. So, yeah. But I don't see, I don't think this card is exactly exceptionally good. I mean, you have to work pretty hard to get this guy online. And even then, like, it's not the end of the world, so... I'll take that. Um, there's a bear and a hornet sting for us in this pack. Um, like, like I said, hornet stings will come. No one really cares about them, and they're like cards to answer stuff like royal assassin and what and pyromancer. But like, I'm not too worried about that right now. I'll take the bear and try and go like a hyper aggressive green white strategy. Um, I mean, looking back on that, like maybe angelic arbiter wasn't the greatest pick. Maybe blinding mage would have fit that strategy more, but we didn't know that. And I think angelic arbiter is still like a huge bomb by itself. So. Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing here that we we're going to play. Maybe Holy Strength to beat Ice Cages, but I'd rather just cut like a Mine Rot. I don't like being on the other end of that. Oh, okay, so here we go. We got Inspired Charge and Mighty Leap, and I'm, I'm surprised this Augury Owl came pretty late. Like, I really like this card in blue. It's one of my favorite cards, and it answers Stormfront Pegasus so well. Um, yeah, I mean, I think our deck wants Mighty Leaps with all these Garrick's Companions, and yeah. I mean, Expire Charge is good, but it's really heavy. Uh, just cut the white card. Alright, see there, now we get to shatter some ice if we want to. Like, Tireless Missionaries is, is, is fine, but I don't think we're going to be hurting in the creature department, so I'd rather have, like, a random answer to stuff. So, pack one is actually pretty decent for us. Not too bad. Uh, let's look at this pack. Uh, it's a lot of black cards. I mean, if we took that Doom Blade in pack one, maybe but like we're not gonna we're not gonna know that like in our colors we got safe passage <coughs> which is a fine trick uh and sorcerer's strong box um like we could go off color like we're definitely not going black considering all the black cards that we passed but like challenger's outrage is potentially a card we could take but i didn't see any red cards in pack one that were worth noting so i don't think we can go red either because we're probably gonna get cut off in pack three so sorcerer's strong box and safe passage are the p what it comes down to and considering green and white Runs out of gas pretty fast, and even like even though I don't really like Sorcerer's Strongbox, even if you miss like a couple of times, like if it ends up costing you like ten mana or something like that to get your three cards, it's still worth it in, in my opinion. So, like, um, I wasn't a huge fan of this until I saw David Felsky win his first GPT with a green and white deck, and the Sorcerer's Strongbox played like paid in dividends for him. So yeah, I'm gonna take that here and see how that works out for me. It may or may not get cut depending on the quality of this deck. Okay, uh, now we got... That's a lot of Lilia Spectres. Um, wow. So we got uh, Giant Spider, Plummet, and Squadron Hawk. Plummet's a sideboard card, and Giant Spider's just a better than Plummet anyways main deck. Squadron Hawk, I would take if I had like seen a Squadron Hawk pack one. Um, otherwise, like the only other card here really is like Giant Spider and Cloud Elementals in this pack too. But I mean, we, we didn't go blue. We decided to pick up Garrick Companion, so we're going to go green and take Giant Spider here. Unfortunately, we've got a lot of criticism saying why we always go green white or green or white red or green red or something like that, but I mean, it can't really be helped here. I mean, I just took the cards as they came. Like, I really want to take that Doom Blade, but I looked at this card and I'm like, even though it costs seven, it's really, really devastating for them, considering they, like, if we're playing a green white strategy with tricks, they'll have no tricks if they attack us or they just can't attack us, which is amazing for us. So, yeah. Anyways, um, looking at this pack, you got a worm, a boar, and a pegasus. Like, I don't think this is like a decision at all. Like, we want to go really hyper aggressive. Lots of bears, pump effects. I want to see some giant girls. I didn't see any in pack one, but hopefully we'll pick some up. But yeah, <coughs> uh, stormfront pegasus is definitely the first pick here. I am not a fan of this card, especially in this kind of deck. But even in like ramp green decks, like there's so many better worms, and this guy just feels like a little overcosted. So yeah, anyways, taking the pegasus. Um, okay, so now we have to make a pretty decent decision here. Like, we have Spine Worm on 5, and Sylvan Ranger on 2. And Inspire Charge is okay, again, like, I'd rather have smaller pump effects than, like, one big one. Um, just because, like, it's more utility, and it works a lot better with guys like this. Um, 
I think that like I don't really care about seeing Spine Worm at this point. Like we'll see Spine Worm come around. And taking Sylvan Ranger like lets opens us up to like, you know, opening a fireball or a lightning bolt and making our manner better. Um yeah, I mean I don't I don't think it's too hard of a decision here. I'd rather just have a lower curve and potentially pick up some pick some tricks here. And I, I think we'll pick up some fatties later, so like missing a spine worm here is not the end of the world. Uh another excommunicate and a lightning bolt in this pack. That's that's a pretty late lightning bolt. There's wow. Um eleven cards in this pack is left, so hmm. I think like I like excommunicate in this in this color combination, but I don't mind you know splashing a lightning bolt at this point. And like maybe we're lucky we'll open a fireball again, like I said, so yeah, I'll take that here. Uh condemn and squadron hawk. I wonder if we'll get that other squadron hawk back, but I don't think I can pass Condemn. I mean, uh, Green White has, you know, is notorious for lacking removal, and I think I'll just take the removal where I can get it. Like, there's a Green White land on our colors, but like, I don't think we should be taking mana fixing at this point. Like, our mana doesn't look too bad. Like, we're splashing a lightning bolt. Like, if this is Rootbound Craig, I'd have, or uh, yeah, if this is Rootbound Craig, I'd have more, you know, more consideration towards it. But as it is, I want removal, and like, unfortunately, we have to pass the Squadron Hawk. But we, considering we already passed one, we're probably not gonna. We might not get it back anyways. So, yeah, this is a safer pick anyways for us. Um, well, nothing in this pack for us. A um, bunch of goblins and earth servants and whatnot. Uh, I don't really care about any of these cards. Like, if they play a bunch of guys with like big butts, like we have excommunicate and flyers, so hopefully we can just get through them. I'm just gonna take this goblin. Uh, I've seen like people like Edwin kill people with the goblin deck, like a bunch of goblin pikers and the goblin lord, so... Um, got a back to nature and a solemn offerings here. Um... And a foil assassinate, but I mean... I'd rather splash like the bolt than any of these black cards. Like we have a mine rot on board as well, but... I I'll take a sideboard solemn offering. I think it's better than back to nature, because it... Like back to nature also kills our pacifism. Yeah. Take solemn offerings. Um, well, really, nothing in this pack. I'll take a sideboard wall of vines, I guess, to stop their flyers. Um, I could hack like a volcanic strength or a lava axe. Nah, I'd rather just take like wall of vines. It's fine on this on the board. Uh, nothing here is really good. Um, yeah, it's just kind of duress. Rindle Boar is fine, not happy with it. Jinx Idol is worth more than a foil land. And I don't like seeing Stabbing Pain, I'll cut that. Uh, Solemn Offerings, hide that. So far, not too bad. We need a little bit more in the creature department, but we're okay. A whole other pack coming. <laughs> 